Welcome back to Genuine Core guys. In the last video, we have seen how to insert data into the database from our program. And in this video, I will show you how to make use of the prepared statement for easily inserting data into the database. So when we press on the insert place button, we have to do the insertion. So the output will be the same, but we just don't have to care about the single code or any escape character that is going to be present in our input. So instead of statement, I'm going to make use of prepared statement. So <coughs> that's important. Prepared statement mt stmt equals con dot prepare statement. And here we will have to give a structure of the statement that we are going to execute. So we are obviously going to execute inserting the users and the values will be and inside the value section instead of giving the actual data you just set a question mark. What this means is we can now set a value for replacing this question mark. Obviously we just want to insert the name into the database so instead of this question mark we just want to replace the name variable and for that stmt dot set string and int parameter index so set string and there you can see that the parameter index start from one not zero I always make the mistake by setting the parameter index to zero but remember it is one and we are going to set the name so that's fine and we just don't want to take uh, that one or this one or anything like that and here stmt.execute then we just close the statement and the execute definitely returns a boolean value uh, some prepared statements return multiple so execute method handles the complex statement as well as simple conversions a method returns a boolean to indicate the form of the first result. You must call A to the method get result or get update and return the result. You must call get more result. It doesn't matter now. Uh, all that you have to do is just type something system dot out or print the LN insertion completed. And because if some kind of error occurs, the, this one will jump to here in the exception section. So that's fine. Let us run the program. No. Uh, it just ran the database project one which is the default file in this project so I guess I'm going to just press on the shift f6 and uh, you see the, our window and I'm going to insert a new good name so we insert a Linux Mint and Ubuntu now let's just, just insert Fedora yeah. insert please so insertion completed and just let us come back here and shift f6 and you can see that there is Fedora in our database. So the insertion was successful. And in order to demonstrate the use of the <coughs> uh, prepared statement in a better fashion, I'm going to create one more table. Let the name of the table be uh, users2. And I'm going to set the name, which will be Waka of 200, maybe 100, just for the try sake. So it is not Watka, it is Waka. Oh, no, I'm sorry, uh, I just put a closing bracket there. So Waka of 100. So that's fine. Then here, I just want to save the age of the number. So here, instead of Waka, I can go for int parallel. Oh my God, I made a mistake again. I just created an unnecessary row. Let us remove that from the code. So I'm going to press on apply. Okay. From here, I just don't want this user code. So now, primary key, okay. I'm going to press apply. There was an error. So let me come back here. So what's the error? No. Then I just remove the comma. Then, okay, it is complete. I got my new table, which is users to what I want is I want to insert data into the table from the user interface. So here definitely I have the uh, place for inserting input. I just want to create one more text field to enter the age of the number. <coughs> so here it is, I'm going to read text and this will be my age input. So when I press on this insert place button, I want to insert data into the table. 
and here we have to make some modification we have changed the database name to insert in users 2 and there are two values now the first one is name and the second one is age of the member so stmp dot set string one name is very good that is what exactly we want in the first parameter section and in the second case we need age so int age equals age input age input oh what was the name of that text i have okay that is input i am not wrong so age input dot get text so in order to convert a text into an integer i just want to pass my integer value from the given string so that is definitely pass int then we got the integer age here and instead of going for set string i just run set integer and here I'm going to set the second column because in my database the column age is the second column. So that's very fine. Then stmt.set int 2 and there is age. So that's fine. Then stmt.execute will insert the value into the database. Let us run the program. And I'm going to set genuine code run. My age is 21. If you want to know, then insert please. So insertion completed, I am going to the database. Uh, so I just want to execute my own code, SQL file one, select star from users two. Then let us just press on the execute button and there you see there is name and age. There is one more thing that I want to show you in this video. That is how on earth we can access multiple columns from our program. In the last one, we just use one column and in this video, let us fetch our users to table. So string name is rs.get string name, and we need an integer value. So int h equals here license string rs.get int because we are accessing an integer value, and uh, integer the name of the column is h. So int h. So then h equals plus h. What I'm doing is when I system when I print it in on the console I just want to print the age too. Now let us run the program. As you can see genuine corner and the age is 21. So that's it guys that's how you insert and accept multiple value multiple columns from a database. I hope this video helped you to learn new things about JDBC and as always thank you for watching this video. Like the video if you like it and subscribe for more cool videos.